Everything's waiting here for you. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Last Night in Soho. This is admittedly just a different setup because I actually just filmed a different Patreon video here, but I thought I might as well use it. Anyways, it's about the movie. This is the latest Edgar Wright film. This film follows a young fashion designer from rural England who comes downtown to London to follow her dreams of being a a fashion designer, all the while carrying some baggage, a grandmother who loves her but is also a bit worried about her considering the mental illness history that her mother had, as well as kind of the strange, more connected, medium-like qualities that she has herself. And then when she comes to London, it's a bit overbearing, especially in her dorm room with the company that she keeps. So she finds a small room at the top of an apartment building. She goes to sleep and she starts to have this dream about Anya Taylor-Joy's character Sandy and how she came to London with dreams and aspirations of being a singer. And the f opening scene is a 60s spectacle. There should also be noted that the main character, Elise, actually is a big fanatic of the 60s. She loves the music, the fashion, the style. Everything about the 60s is what she grew up with from records from her grandmother and her mom, and that carries over into her influences. And the fact that she gets to relive the essentially these moments from Sandy's life through her dreams at first show so much promise show the aspiring starlet going to the big city to try and make it big kind of story she starts to take influences from Sandy in these dreams and she incorporates that into her everyday life she starts to change her hair change her style start to really reflect that of Sandy's story all the while kind of ignoring people in the current day who are trying to be nice to her trying to be you know, friendly with her who actually are friendly. There is one character in particular who's a really nice guy in here, but there are also a lot of seedy people, one of them being Terrence Stamp, who is just in this movie to be a creepy old dude. But then as she starts to continue these dreams, she starts to see that Sandy goes down a dark road, a road that just keeps getting worse and worse and worse with every story. She realizes that the glitz and glamour that she was holding on for, for Sandy as well as her own, is actually deeply buried under layers of deceit, debauchery, and just seedy, ugly British people. <laughs> as they get more degrading and violent, the dreams and the monsters that she sees start to bleed over into her reality and she starts to truly start to lose her marbles. When it comes to an Edgar Wright film, you always know you're in for a visual treat, and in terms of how he displays the story, switching back and forth between Sandy and Elise. And, and while it takes a little while to get there, you're seeing a few of the normal tropes that Edgar Wright has with Elise getting to London. Once she has this dream, Edgar dips into that visual creativity that he's so well known for. During this opening dance number between Sandy's character and the old Doctor Who, it keeps switching back and forth between Sandy and Elise in the position of dancing. Now some of this obviously is done with just really fast choreography and other bits of it is done with visual effects. And I love this bleeding, this symmetry between the two, especially with mirrors. Mirrors are a big thing, a big reflection in the film. You get connected to two different people's stories, one in the current day and one in the past. And as you start to go down this road with them, you get more and more connected to their story. And you feel this right up until the climax. I'll definitely say that the pacing of this film is fairly decent. The visual imagery is very well done. The connection slash homage love, clear love to the 60s is very much on display. But at the same time, Edgar is also willing to show what was wrong with that time. What was really hidden behind the curtain, essentially. While Anya Taylor-Joy really isn't a, much of a main character, we're getting her story through kind of montage assembled clips essentially as the dreams start to progress I still really enjoyed her character as well as I enjoyed Elise's connection to her and just her slowly starting to lose her marbles this connection this medium uh, sort of establishment that she has starting to bleed more and more where she starts seeing these faces and these people walking around her all the time however I will say that it actually does start to get a bit repetitive there is a point where she has three freakouts essentially back to back to back all within one kind of fluid sequence by the second time I was like all right and then the third time it happened I'm like okay the story should really start moving along here because we're starting to see just the same same stuff over and over again. We're not getting any further in the story. We're just seeing the same thing happen. And thankfully the movie does move on from this. And I actually
actually do like how it ends, even though the movie blatantly lies to you at one point. Everything about the narrative is actually quite connected in terms of Sandy and Elisa's connection, except for one very crucial bit that the movie will contradict at the end of the story. And I did feel that was a little bit of a cheap pull. I thought that maybe they could have establish that differently to kind of fit that narrative more it throws you for a loop for the sake of throwing you a loop because it needs to otherwise the ending of the film wouldn't make any sense those are my only real kind of conniptions with the film i enjoyed the acting i enjoyed the directing i enjoyed the story i did enjoy some of the horror bits even though they did get a little bit too overdone i always liked the idea of a story where someone's dreams their fantasies become the reality but then that reality becomes a nightmare i always like that trick in narrative storytelling and it works decently well here even if you have seen this story done before and so while last night in soho might be not the most edgar wright edgar wright movie you've seen i still think it's a cool idea i'm glad that he went with it i'm glad that he tried something different and it's still a pretty well put together movie in the end, I'm going to give Last Night in Soho a 5 out of 7. I enjoyed the aesthetic, I enjoyed the style, I enjoyed the characters, I enjoyed the story. I especially enjoyed the soundtrack. My god, this is one of those movies that makes me miss having my radio show so much, because I would have played this soundtrack in a heartbeat. Anyways guys, that's all from me. What did you guys think of the movie? Tell me in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time.